you've ever found your computer to be really slow when working in After Effects, this video will show you some simple steps you can take to help. I'll go over some ways to make animation previews ready quicker and just for general faster performance when working in After Effects. This video comes from my class, Animation Efficiency, Work Faster in Adobe After Effects. In the class, I also go over my process of staying organized and my best tips, tricks, and tools for doing more in less time, all to maximize your efficiency. You can check it out with a free trial of Skillshare by using the link in the description below this video. Now let's get into the tips. These tips are roughly in the order of steps that I take when I start to get impatient. The first tip is just to make sure you're on the most up-to-date version of After Effects. In the 2022 release of After Effects, there was a big new change that should make After Effects faster no matter what computer you have. Plus, a new feature called Composition Profiler gives you more info about how long specific frames, layers, effects, masks, and compositions take to render. When you know what's slowing things down, you can use some of the upcoming tips to speed things up. So first, let's just take a look at Composition Profiler. So as long as you're on an updated version of After Effects, you should see this frame render time in the bottom of your timeline. So this frame is taking 27 milliseconds to render. If you click on this little snail icon right here, you can see how long it takes each layer to render. And the times for all of these layers should add up to the total time at the bottom. And this is going to be slightly different for each frame, depending on what's going on in the animation. If there's a little asterisk next to one of the numbers, that just means that all or part of this layer has been cached. So this time is the time it takes to render out anything additional that's needed and to retrieve that cache. I added this glow effect on the inner part of the body here, just to show you that you can see how long different effects are taking to render. So this is taking an additional four milliseconds to render, and this 13 milliseconds is the total time to render for this entire body composition for this frame right here. Tip number two is to bring the resolution down from full to one of these lower options. This should reduce the render time so that you can preview your animation without having to wait as long for it to be ready. It'll also make your preview pixelated, but this is only the preview. When you export your final animation, it'll always export in full resolution, so you don't have to worry about going back and changing this dropdown. Also notice that you have an option for the resolution over in the preview panel. I usually just leave this one on auto. So this resolution is for the resolution once you hit the spacebar to preview your animation, this will be the resolution. If it's set to auto, it'll just match whatever is set right here. This one is for the still frame. So it's going to be quarter resolution on this still frame and any other still frame that I choose. If you wanted the still frames to be like a higher resolution, like full, but then you know that your previewed animation is going to take a long time to preview, you could set the resolution over here to something lower. That way, when you hit play, it's going to play back a little bit pixelated, but when you hit pause, it'll clear up again. You can also use this button right here to turn on adaptive resolution, and this will just make your quality of your preview even worse, but should be faster. And just note that these render times are not going to be as accurate with this turned on. Honestly, this really drives me crazy because sometimes it makes it really, really pixelated and hard to see when you're actually working, so I don't use this option. Another thing you can do to speed up your performance is to make sure that you're previewing at 100% or less because scaling up will slow down After Effects a bit. Tip number three is to solo the layer that you're wanting to focus on. So if I was just animating this fish swimming across the scene, I could just hit the little solo button. And not only does that focus in on what I want to work on, it also helps After Effects speed up because it only has to render out this for me to preview, not everything else. Another option would just be to turn off the visibility on layers that you don't need. Now keep in mind that you need to turn this back to the way that you want it for your final export before you actually go and export. Tip number four is to trim your layers to only the length that you need. And better yet, use those shortcuts to do it. If you have nested compositions, you should trim the inner composition to only the size, as in the width and height, that you need. This is the case even if the extra area is just transparent. 
It may not seem like this would make a big difference, but After Effects doesn't know that this area is transparent until it goes through and looks at each pixel to create the image to display to you. So if you crop your composition to only the size you need, there will be less pixels for After Effects to have to go through and render. Tip number five is to use the region of interest. So just click this little button here, and then you can drag out a little box over whatever you need to be previewing. This is just for a temporary preview, but if After Effects is running really slow because you have a really complex scene, this can be helpful to preview something in full quality, say, just to make sure that everything is looking good. Then you can always deselect this and go back to quarter quality just to get the whole scene in view again. Tip number six is to trim your work area to only the area that you need to preview. So just use the B and N keys to trim your work area, and that way After Effects will only have to think about RAM previewing and caching this area, which will speed it up. Tip number seven is to temporarily turn off any effects that are taking a long time to render. So for instance, this wave warp on the seaweed here is taking 91 milliseconds to render, and if I turn that off, now this layer is taking about half the time to render. So I could just temporarily turn off the wave warp effect, and then before I want to export my final animation, I could turn it back on. Another thing that you can temporarily turn off for faster previews and performance is motion blur. So when you set motion blur, you have to set it on each layer that you want motion blur to be on, and you also have to turn it on here. So blue is on. And this is not giving me the greatest example because it's already cached this, so it actually isn't taking very long to render this layer with motion blur. But if you turn off motion blur, which you can do by just turning this off, and that'll turn it off for the entire composition, you can see that it does speed up the render time. And then before you go to export your final animation, just make sure that you turn back on motion blur here. This tip also goes for things like depth of field and textures. If you can temporarily turn it off, it'll improve your performance. And then just remember to turn it back on before you export your final animation. Also, continuously rasterize will take a bit more time to render, but sometimes continuously rasterize will compress your layers in ways that you may or may not expect. So just make sure that you're being aware that if you turn it off, it's not like changing the look. So that's just something to keep in mind. Tip number eight is to use adjustment layers rather than applying the same effect to multiple layers. So for example, say I wanted to add a blur effect to all the layers of this jellyfish, maybe to make it look like it's in the background or something. Rather than applying the blur effect to each individual layer, it will be faster to render if I use an adjustment layer and apply the blur effect to that. Remember, adjustment layers affect all the layers below them, so this may not always work out for what you're trying to accomplish. But if you can, it will render faster to apply an effect to an adjustment layer rather than the same effect to multiple layers. A bonus of using adjustment layers is that it's faster for you to just turn off the visibility of the adjustment layer to disable the effect, maybe to make the preview run faster or just to see what it looks like without the effect. Tip number nine is to close any other programs just so that your computer has less overall work to do. You can also check force quit if you're on a Mac and just check if anything in here you expected to be closed but is actually open. That might mean that it's stuck and force quitting will make your computer go a little bit faster. Also, if you have a bunch of panels open in After Effects that you don't need, closing those out should make After Effects run faster because there's less for it to think about. Tip number 10 is to delete any assets in your project panel that you're not actually using for your project because all of that extra information can be bogging After Effects down. Tip number 11 is to increase the number of skips in your preview panel. This means that After Effects will skip frames, so you can choose one, two, or five frames for it to skip when previewing, and that way it just has less frames to render out to show you. So you can see that my timeline is already all green. It's already rendered all of those frames and they're ready for me to view, but you can see that when I press play, it is only showing me every five frames and this just makes the animation look a bit choppy. But when I export my final animation, it's always gonna export all the frames. So this is just for the sake of getting your preview ready to see faster. Tip number 12 is to only preview what you need. So if you don't need to hear your audio, you can turn it off. Or if you don't need to see the visuals and you just wanna hear the audio, you can turn off the video.
Tip number 13 has to do with the color channel. So if you click here, you can open up the color settings. So right now this project is set for 16 bits per channel. You also have the option to go down to 8 or go up to 32. So what the color depth or bit depth means is it's the number of bits per channel used to represent the color of a pixel. So the more bits for each RGB channel, red, green, and blue, the more colors each pixel can represent. So basically the higher the color depth, the more color information in your project, so the higher quality, but the slower the render time. One reason why you might want to bump your bits per channel up from eight is if you have a lot of gradients in your project because they'll look better with more color information. You could set your color depth to eight bits per channel while you're working and then right before you go to render out your final project, then just bump this up to 16, for example. Tip number 14 is to make your artwork as big as you need it to be, but not any extra big. This is especially important for raster images, so things from Photoshop or photos like JPEGs or PNGs. When you're working with raster images, you have the option to choose the resolution of your image. This image is 72 pixels per inch. In After Effects, that looks like this, and it takes 444 milliseconds to load. Now by contrast, if I have the same image, but it's 300 pixels or dots per inch, it's going to display much bigger dimensions wise, and it also takes much longer to render. So for video, dots or pixels per inch are really irrelevant. It's really just for printing that those numbers mean anything. So when working with raster images, it's best just to use 72 dots per inch, because really when you set something to 300 dots per inch or something bigger than 72, all it's doing is resizing your image. And if you were to counter that by resizing the image like dimensions wise yourself, it'll be about the same. So this one is, I just took it's 300 DPI, but I shrunk it down to the same size. Obviously you can see that with the look of it between this one and my 72 dots per inch one. And it's basically pretty similar render time. So by rule of thumb, I think it'd be easier just to work in 72 dots per inch for any raster images that you're gonna use in After Effects. Tip number 15 is to make sure that you're allocating enough memory for After Effects. So to do this, you go to After Effects, Preferences, and then Memory and Performance. Remember that After Effects is using memory to store rendered frames of your animation so that it's ready to play back when you hit the play button. You can increase the amount of memory or RAM for After Effects by decreasing the amount of reserved RAM for other applications. After Effects shares memory with these other applications, so if you can close one of these that you have open while working in After Effects, then After Effects will have more memory to work with. Tip number 16 is to just do a general cleanup of your computer to make sure that your computer is running at its fastest. So you could clean off your desktop, back up and delete any files that you aren't using or don't need anymore, and also make sure that you have enough storage on your computer. If your computer is really full, then it tends to run a little bit slower. Also, when you're going to delete stuff, consider deleting applications that you no longer use, or check if you have multiple versions, like the old past years of After Effects or Illustrator or any of those still on your computer. Maybe that's something that you could delete. Tip number 17 is like a last resort kind of thing. So if you're having a really hard time previewing your animation or you're rendering it out and it's a huge file size because you're doing something that's super complex, you could consider lowering the frame rate. So especially if you're doing something that's 60 frames or 120 frames per second, that's a lot more information for After Effects to have to deal with than something that's half of that, like 30. Or if you're at 30, maybe even try going down to 15. It is going to change the appearance of your animation, which is why I call this a last resort type of tip. So just keep in mind that if you lower the frame rate, it's going to look a little bit more cartoony, a little bit more choppy than if you're using something way up here like 30, 60, or 120. If After Effects is running really slowly and you think something might be wrong, one thing that you can do is go to Edit, Purge, All Memory, and Disk Cache. And this is just going to clear out all of those rendered frames in RAM preview memory and disk cache memory. And if anything in there had gotten corrupt or was just messing things up, it'll clear all that out so you can start fresh.
And this is not necessarily going to speed up your renders at first because all of that cache data was helping speed up your previews. So this will temporarily slow them down, but if there was something in there that was messed up, then eventually you should get back up to speed. If you just want to clear your RAM preview data, closing After Effects will delete all of that. You could also try rebooting your computer if you think something wrong. A good old turn off and turn back on can sometimes do miracles. Also, make sure that After Effects is up to date. To keep learning ways to work faster in After Effects, check out the Skillshare class that this video came from. You can access the class with a free trial of Skillshare using the link in the description. Thanks for watching, until next time, happy animating!